Hey guys, so today we're going to be covering the topics of expected portfolio returns and portfolio variances. Before we begin, I think it's important to cover some key definitions talked about in this video. So a portfolio is a group of assets such as stocks and bonds held by an investor. A portfolio weight is the percentage of a portfolio's total value invested in a particular asset. The expected return is the average return on a risky asset expected in the future. And variance is a common measure of volatility. Now, these are the key definitions, but we're going to kind of work through them in examples to really understand them. So to calculate the expected return of a portfolio, we have to multiply the portfolio weight of the respective equity by its expected return and sum the products. The formula below looks at a two stock portfolio with stock I and stock J. By multiplying the weight of stock I by its expected return and adding that to the product of multiplying stock J by its expected return, we receive the stock uh, return for the expected return for the portfolio. And so this formula can be expanded to include 50 assets. It can be expanded to include 1,000. All we have to do is we have to account for the weighting, the respective weighting of that asset and its expected return to find the expected return of the portfolio. So let's take a look at an example. Calculate the expected return of a portfolio with three stocks. So this is a three stock portfolio. Now we're adding one more set to really calculate the expected return of the portfolio. So stock A has an expected return of 3% and makes up 25% of the portfolio. Stock B has expected return of 1% and makes up 50% of the portfolio. And stock C has an expected return of 9% and makes up 25% of the portfolio. By inputting this into the formula, where we multiply the weight of stock A by its expected return and add that to the result of multiplying the weight of stock B by its expected return and adding that to the weight of stock C times its expected return to find the expected return for the portfolio. So in this example, the portfolio's expected return is 3.5%. This is relatively simple and students don't really struggle with this. But as we move into more complex examples, this fundamental equation of multiplying the weight by its expected return is very important to remember. So in example two, let's find the expected return of the portfolio below. It is equally invested across its three assets. So one third of the investment will be in stock A, one third in stock B, and one third in stock C. And so in this, in this example, there are two different states in the economy, each with a 50% likelihood. In the boom period, stock A increases by 10%, stock B by 15%, and stock C by 20%. But in the bust period, stock A only increases by 8%, stock B by 4%, and stock C by 0%. So there are two different states in the economy. And so if we recall the definition of expected return, it is the average expected performance of the stock. That means that to account for the different states of the economy, we must multiply the probability of that state by its expected return in that state, and then sum that with the remaining probability on the other state times its respect expected return to find the net expected return of stock A. So looking at the calculations for stock A, there's a 50% likelihood of a boom period where the stock grows by 10%. So 0.5 times 10 plus 0.5 times 8, we get expected return of 9%. And that is the average return of the stock across the two periods. That is done for stock B and C below here. And we input that to find the expected return of A, B, and C. Now, to find the expected return of the portfolio, we simply input these numbers into our formula that we covered in example one. So again, they're equally invested across uh, across the three assets. So by multiplying uh, one over three times 9%, plus one over three times 9.5%, plus one over three times 10%, we get the expected portfolio return of 9.5%. And so one over three is our weighting for stock A by its expected return. And so this is simply the formula that we covered at the beginning of the video. And so that's so when we're looking at different states of the economy and examples covering these different states, it's really important to simplify the expected return by finding the average expected return of that stock. So accounting for it by multiplying the probability of that state by its expected return. Okay. So before we move on to finding the procedure to calculating the portfolio's variance, it's important to recall how to calculate the variance of a stock. And so this is where a lot of students kind of stumble, and it's really important to practice this. So to calculate the, the variance of a stock, there's five steps that we need to follow. First, we need to find the expected return, which we did in the previous examples. So we know how to do that. Then 
using that expected return, we have to calculate the return deviation, which means subtracting the expected return from the return for each state. Then we square the return deviation. We multiply that squared return deviation by the probability of each state, and then add up the results to find the variance. Now this can seem a little confusing, so we're gonna do an example to really solidify our knowledge of this procedure. So in example three, consider the expected returns of ABC Corp. What is the variance of this stock? So we already know how to calculate the expected return, right? It is the average return of ABC Corp across the two different states of the economy. So we multiply the probability of the state in the boom period times its expected return, and then 0 0.8 times negative 20% to get an expected return of negative 2%. The next step is to calculate the, re the return deviation. That means we have to subtract negative 2% from 70% and negative 20%. The calculations are here. So in the boom state, we're taking, we're subtracting negative 2% from 70% to get 72% and negative 20% minus negative 2% for a result of negative 18%. These are our return deviations, which can be seen here. The next step is to square these return deviations. So we simply raise 72% to the power of two and raise negative 18% to the power of two to get a squared return deviation result of 51.8% for the boom period and 3.2% for the bus period, as you can see right over here. The next step is to multiply the squared deviation by the probability of each state. So 0 0.2 times 51.8% is 10.4% and 0 0.8 times 3.2% is 2.6%. So multiplying that, we find the product. Then we simply sum up these numbers, 10.4% plus 2.6% to find our stock's variance, ABC Corp's variance of 12.96%. So that is the procedure on how to calculate the stock's variance. And this is really important. So we're gonna look once again at this slide that we started off the example with. So the five steps to calculating the stock's variance is first, we find the expected return. Then we calculate the return deviation by subtracting the expected return from the return for each state, square the return deviation, multiply that by the probability of each state, and then add up the results to find the variance. So moving on to how to calculate the portfolio's variance, calc this is very important to remember. And this is where a lot of students mess up during their financial courses. So calculating the portfolio variance is not like calculating the expected return of a portfolio. So if an example were to say, this portfolio is split 50-50 between stock A and B, and the variances of those stocks are 45% and 10%. What a lot of students do is they multiply the weighting by the variance, similar to what you do for an expected return, to find the portfolio's variance. So 0 0.5 times 45% plus 0 0.5 times 10%. Now this is wrong. This is really important to remember. And so instead of following the expected return procedure, we have to recall the stock variance procedure because that is what we need to follow. So let's look at example four. So consider the portfolio below. What is the portfolio's variance? If it is 50% invested in stock A and 25% in each of stocks B and C. So once again, there are two states in the economy, a boom and a bust state. The probabilities of each state are 50%, so it's 50-50. And these are the, uh, the expected returns for each of the stocks in each of the states. So as I said before, what a lot of students do is they'll find the variance of each of the respective stocks and then multiply them by their respective weightings, summing it up and then saying that's the portfolio variance. That is wrong. What you have to do is you need to simplify the problem. And that means that you have to merge these three expected returns in the boom period to find an expected return for the portfolio in the boom period and find the expected return for the portfolio in the bust period. So we simply do that by multiplying the weights by their expected return in, the, in each of the states. So so again, stock A is invested 50% in the portfolio, and then B and C are 25%. So 0 0.5 times 10% plus 0 0.25 times 15% plus 0 0.25 times 20% for an expected portfolio return of 13.75% during the boom period. We do the same thing for the bust period, and we get a 5% expected portfolio return. Now we have simplified the, the example. And we've now merged these three uh, returns for each of the state. And now we have a portfolio expected return for each of the states. 
we don't even have to look at these uh, numbers anymore. All we, we've simplified the problem now to be looking at the portfolio expected return in each of the states, and now we can follow the stock variance procedure. So imagine we weren't looking at a portfolio procedure, and por so this these returns would be for ABC Corp. You already know how to do this already because we covered in example three. If ABC Corp had an expected return of 13.75% during a boom period, and ABC Corp had an expected return of 5% during the bust period, You'd simply multiply these, uh, multiply the probability of that state by its expected return for each of these states to find the expected return, then find the return deviation, square the return deviation, multiply the probability uh, of the state by those results, and then sum up the products to find the variance. So we already know how to do that. And so that's really the key to finding the portfolio variance. We want to simplify the procedure by merging the stocks, the, the averages, the performance of the each stock in the portfolio during each of the states to find a expected portfolio, portfolio return during that state. And then we follow our stock variance procedure. So our expected return for the portfolio is 9.375%. It multiplies 0 0.5 times 13.75, and then do the same thing for the bust. And that's that. Then we subtract this from 13.75 and 5% to find our return deviation. We then square our return deviation. We then multiply our return deviation by the probability of that state for each state, find the product, sum up the product, and there is our variance for the portfolio. So once again, you want to simplify the procedure to find the expected return of the portfolio in each state. Once we've done that, we can simply follow the stock variance procedure and we are able to find the portfolio variance. So for our bonus question today, there are two parts. So in the first part, consider the portfolio below. It is 25% invested in stock A and C and 50% invested in stock B. Now, in this example, there are four states. Instead of two, we're looking at four. This is just a little bit to make it a little harder and more challenging, but the procedures are very similar. So in part one, what is the expected return of the portfolio, right? So we do the same thing. You want to make sure that you remember the weightings of each of the stocks. And then in part two, what is the variance of that same portfolio? So this portfolio above. And so once again, I'm going to reiterate because what a lot of students struggle with is not the expected return of the portfolio, but the portfolio variance. So you want to simplify the problem. Because if you look at all these numbers and you calculate the individual variance and then do the weightings, that's going to be wrong. You want to make sure that you are calculating the expected portfolio return in each of the states and then following the stock variance procedure. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And if you have any questions, please do reach out. Thanks, guys.